Welcome to Toss Fly Corner. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a little variation of a, a hackle stacker. I'm going to do it in a, an Adam style emerger. Hook I have here in the vise is a Daiichi 1180, number 14. The thread I'm going to be using is Uni Light Olive, NATO. Start the thread near the eye, wind back to almost halfway. For the tailing material for the shuck, we're going to use ice for a rusty orangutan. It comes in small hanks on the piece. Just pull yourself off a small hank, twist it so you get the fibers together. and then just cut yourself off a length. We're going to take our rusty orangutan ice fur. Catching in towards the front with a good amount sticking out the front. And just pull it into place. Don't worry if you lose some because we want a nice thin shock on this. And just wind it back, touch and turns, keeping it on top until you get almost to the bar. And you can lift up any of your remaining butts and snip them away. Get Adam's gray dubbing. Super fine. Only dub with a small amount at a time. Dub the thread nice and tight. You don't have to get it right up next to the to the hook bend because we're going to be able to wrap back a little bit further. You just want to make sure that your dubbing is nice and tight. Use very small amounts when you dub. Once the thread is dubbed, you can wind it. If you have a remaining thread, just wrap back until your dubbing starts. And just wind forward, touching turns, till you reach just past the midway point with your dubbing. And you can take your scissors and cut an easy way to do it. If you want just the body length, just fold it back over. Pinch it where you want. And then cut it away. We have a nice sparse shock on there. That will drive the fish nuts. Next, we're going to tie in our hackle. So, one brown hackle in the proper size. Then select a grizzly hackle in the proper size. Pair each of the hackles by cutting off where the web starts to thin out. You can easily see this by the transition where the hackle starts to get uniform. Simply cut it off there and then snip away the bar to reveal a tying point. I'll tie in the grizzly hackle. Tied him on the way up. Now on the way back down, I'll tie in the brown hackle. Tying them in with the good side facing up. Nice tight wraps, tying them back to where your dubbing starts. Now at this point, we're going to want to make our loops that we're going to wind on. We want to take our finger and bring the thread up and around our finger. 
come around the hook shank once, make another loop in the exact same spot on your finger. Come around the hook shank once, make another loop. You need three loops to pull this off. Tighten those down with a couple firm wraps. And you have the loop, I have the loop around my finger. At this point you can let your finger finger out of the loop. Just wrap back over it once to secure. At this point we want to dub again. Get Adam's Gray dubbing. Super fine. Only dub with a small amount at a time. We won't need much. So only do little bits at a time. Wrap the dubbing forward and have the dubbing finish. We need a little bit more. Have the dubbing finish in the rear. Take a look at the underside of your fly. Make sure that you got a nice good taper. We're going to leave our thread here, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dub just a small tiny amount just a small tiny amount on our thread with leaving ourselves a gap here of thread what this is going to do is we're going to tie off the hackle with this portion here and this portion is going to get us back to the front and with the dubbing on there it will protect the thread making the fly extremely durable now we're going to grab our grab our loops we're going to keep a finger in the loop. It's going to keep it tight for us. And we have the rest of our fingers in this free hand here to wrap with. Start both your hackles. Just start winding them up the post. I'm just passing it back, bringing it around then catching it between my middle finger and my thumb to hold it in place and then bring it around. You only want your post that you wrapped your hackle only as far up to the hook eye. That's as high as you want to wrap. See my fingernail? It's right at the top of the post and right at the top of the eye. That's as far as I want to wrap. So I begin to wrap the hackles back down the post. Once you've reached the bottom, it's time to tie off the hackle. You can let your finger out of the loop. Don't let go of the hackle. I trade the hackle. First I bring the thread up. I cross my thread underneath by changing the hackle in my, into my other hand. And then I bring, pull the hackle to the side and bring the thread right up and sneak it right over top then repeat that process. This way you won't trap hackles. Then we're just going to grab everybody, lift everything up, and bring our thread right to the front. At this point you can sneak your scissors in Snip away those hackles. Next, grab your loops all together. Start stroking, pulling your loop forward. Start stroking all this hackle up. Pinch the loop and the hackle between your finger and thumb. And bring your thread up so that you can get it on top of the loop, thread loop. Then you can pull the loop and pull down on your thread to tighten it down. And you'll want a couple more tight turns on there, tighten it down again, and then simply sweep everything back, including your thread loops and wind back over it to lock it in. 
this point, I like to go right into the whip finish. Let's get everybody back out of the way. The three turn whip. Make sure that thread's tight. Snip him away. And we can cut our loop out. And you can put your hackle back in the It'll take you a little a couple of them to really get that technique down. But once you do, it's rather simple to tie. And they're a great fly. Very durable. They float great. And they can be easy to see depending on what hackle you use. Uh, like an Adam style is pretty easy to see on the water. And with the light olive thread, once the, the dubbing here gets wet, that it'll it'll get a nice little olive-ish hue to it but it'll still be majority gray and I found this to be the best best match for uh, any blue winged olives not canudas but general blue winged olives because they mostly have a gray body with just a slight hue of olive to them but give that coloration a try even if with all your blue winged flies and that's the fly emerging atoms uh, hackle stack style. Uh, my technique with the hackle and that is called a para loop. If you're curious, if you ever seen anything that says para loop? That's what we just did there. It's the hackle stacker. I'm Johnny Utah. Check me out on my site www.utahsflycorner.com. Thanks for watching.